This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva Luxury Mattress, the only online mattress company that provides free delivery, setup, and mattress removal. Welcome, welcome to Your Mom's House with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to Your Mom's House. All right, ta-ta there, TikToks. Thank you for joining us today. To my right, my sweet love of my life, fire of my loins, is still on tour in Europe. Uh, but kindly today, Ryan Sickler is here to I'm co-host. Thank you. I'm, I'm Sorry, I should have clapped too. You shouldn't. I'm clapping because I'm excited <laughs> to be here, not for myself. I'm I'm clapping for the opportunity. Just we so love you, know. you. I love you. For those of you who don't already know, Ryan is a part of the Studio Jeans family, and you may check him out on the Honeydew Podcast. Yes, Honeydew Podcast, HoneydewPodcast.com. That's where you can find everything you need to know about the Honeydew. Uh, and make sure you subscribe to your mom's house YouTube channel where all of our videos are. That's right. It's highlighting the low lights in That's life. Right. So you guys talk about the, the tough stuff that you've somehow turned and made into something positive, which is awesome. Yeah. I love the worst that shit. And we like to <laughs> laugh at the worst shit. Too. Isn't that the yeah. essence of good comedy? Yes, it is. All right. Let's get into it. Uh, so we got this wonderful opening clip. As you know, I'm a fan of the talk. <laughs> Stop saying that I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Stop it. It's really hurtful. <laughs> I was it came out of the game. I mean, as soon as you say it, you can't you not me? feel. <laughs> I'm not a racist. My sister went down. Going down to the mountain. Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house. With Tom Segura. Tom Segura. Christina Pajitsi. Christina Pajitsi. <laughs> Welcome to your mom's there tiktoks <laughs> how much do you love that girl i'm sitting here laughing so hard thinking how many people had to say you know you look like jeffrey dahmer before she put a video out to calling all ears stop saying i look like it must have been so many people she's like i mean then why not at least like take that advice and change your glasses or something you know what i mean like do something a little different because the pigtails are not doing it. <laughs> as soon as she said it, I was like, oh my God, he does, she does oh, look like that right now. It's so good. You know what I love? <laughs> Is that nerds always get fucking... <laughs> nerds always get bullied and trolled. And like, they think the way to stop it is to be like, stop calling me. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a new game. Yeah. Plan. Like it's, it, you don't, you don't tell, you don't get them to stop bullying you. Yeah. Like, you guys need to stop bullying me. <laughs> I just like, it spirals. The, yeah. The stop way to not. That I look like Jeffrey <laughs> The way to not get people to bully you is the worst. The way you can start it off is okay. Listen up, everybody. Like then you're just you're right there. You're gonna get eggs thrown at you, or right. shots to the face. A hundred percent. Like people don't care. They don't care. And in they fact, like every time I see one of these nerds get on there and be uh. like. I saw you guys in my comment section leaving <laughs> bad call. Like, you guys, it doesn't fucking work. Like, you just have to F all the haters. You have to ignore. They your don't hit. exist. No, bring if her you back up. Them. We're not done. We are I, I, not yeah, done. This, this, she's my favorite. She is just primate. Let's, I, okay, and you're right, right from the jump. So let's, let's examine the TikTok. <laughs> Stop saying that I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. That is a mass request <laughs> to any and everyone who's listening. <laughs> That's not, hey, Kevin, <laughs> stop saying I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. It's very specific. Can you bring up a picture of Jeffrey Dahmer? Really quick? 
I would ne- when I saw this one, I would never expect those words to come out of that little girl's <laughs> that's mouth. What I'm that's the first thing she said. Yeah, she does look like that. The glasses right here. These the glasses. These glasses are it. Yeah. Especially because <laughs> who goes into the, <laughs> who went in? She went into Costco for glasses. And said, "Give me the Dahmers. Give me the Jeffrey Dahmer." <laughs> right. Like, <clears throat> and especially she's so young. She actually knows that reference. <clears throat> it's pretty alarming. But yeah, you know you look like a serial killer. Maybe she learned it from this. <clears throat> from that one. <laughs> where they call her. It's like, who's Jeffrey Who the Dahmer? Who is that guy? <laughs> oh, Give the me guy the that, Dahmer. The guy that killed <laughs> an eight people? That's what you think I look like? <laughs> that is a very distinct look. Like, that guy only kills people. <laughs> That's it. That's his job. That's his, his primary gig. He is not an accountant, right? No. What is he? Is he wearing like mechanics coveralls? Oh no, that's prison. That's garb. prison jumpsuit. Yeah. <clears throat> right, yeah. Oh, give me the Dahmer. <laughs> Stop saying that I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it's really Stop hurtful. It. Oh, okay. Okay. Fucking. <laughs> and then she's she her she eating a, a roast beef. <laughs> yeah. She's such a nut. Uh, <sighs> oh, I just want to thank TikTok for <laughs> all this content. It just keeps getting better. <sighs> That was a um, good one. I need that a drink a of water. One. Yeah, that was a good one. She came out of the gate hot. Man. Uh, I mean, I was bullied. And I think, you know, I, I got it. Honestly, I think everybody at some point gets bullied in their life. And now yes. the, the worst thing you can try to do is to stop the world from bullying. Because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like... Um, it's like trying to stop dumb people. Like we're going to put an end to, to or, or, or something that's not stoppable. We're going to end all fires. We're going to end the whole war. It's not going to happen. So you, you got to treat your kid, teach your kids to just beat the fuck out of somebody. I, I listen, you know what I'm saying? Like since my daughter's been three, I tell her you don't ever hit anybody, but if somebody hits you, you can hit them back. Ab- Make absolutely. sure you don't hit first. You hit last. A hundred percent. And she's like, but I'll get in trouble. I said, well then you let me deal with that. Uh, but you, but know, you protect sc- yourself. That's right. But in school Fuck now, yeah. they, the kid gets in trouble for hitting back. Did you know that? Your daughter uh, yes. will get suspended. I'm okay with that. Same. I'm okay with that. Same. She'll remember that even more. A hundred percent. My dad stuck up for me and they still suspended me. Yes. So I, yeah, especially for girls, you know, um, but now they have the whole anti-bullying campaigns in school, which, I mean, I support <laughs> I support yeah, the of message, course, of course, course, just like to say no to drugs. Yeah, yeah good luck, know. guys. Uh, that work good luck on us. that. But there's always going to be assholes. There yes. are always, and that's what life is. A hundred, That's yes. what life is. My my stepson just got his first job. He's 16. I'm very proud. I'm working at Little Caesars. Oh, pizza, pizza. And a, yeah. And a guy comes in with a $100 bill. And their rule is they can only accept 20 and under. He's the only male working with three, I think it was three other ladies. And one of those ladies is the manager. This guy's fucking hot. He's screaming. He's yelling. And no one knew what to do. And he finally just goes, pulls out his wallet. He goes, I have $17. But he owed like 21 He threw it on the counter. He grabbed his fucking pizzas. And he ran out. Shortened them $4. But it, it, was, it was his first time seeing like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, people are fucking assholes. Mm-hmm. Some people are just fucking assholes. And they right. all, he was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, now you're learning what life is about. A hundred percent. And and some people don't have the luxury of being raised by nice, loving parents. And that's how they become bullies. Yes. So you're talking about a really bigger problem other than like, stop people from making comments. Right. Like, okay, good but luck. But you're going to shit. confront it in your life. Like, yeah. I was never bullied in the sense that it was this ongoing thing all through ninth grade or whatever. But there were certainly instances in my life where I was bullied, you know, moments, I would say, not a course of action. But that's where I learned to every everyone's going to have that, whether it's in sports or school or work, all of it. It's going to happen. I'm telling you, some girl used to beat the. uh, There's a story I did on Comedy Central. This is not happening. Ari's show where I talk about this girl, Rosina. Was that her name? Did I just say her name? Yeah. And uh, she used to b- bully me in the in the locker room. And you know what I did? I punched back. Fuck yeah. I just fucking punched. I didn't yeah. say I made contact, but I punched <laughs> back. <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do That's is it. just swing, man. Okay. So as you see, my beloved Tom is out. Um, and we have such a major, awesome YMH update. So they're in Amsterdam right now, Josh Potter and Tommy, and this is the video Tom sent us today, what's going to be happening later tonight. Hey, YMH family. I'm in Amsterdam, absolutely stunning city. Yesterday was Berlin. 
Well, after the wall <laughs> fell, we got bananas <laughs> on the east side. That's what I learned. Um, I'm gonna go to the gym, and uh, I am, I really am, pre-show workout, the two shows here in Amsterdam. Then I'm gonna go to the red light district with Josh, and hopefully hire the hottest prostitute to make him come. That's what I'm trying to do. He said that he was down, so just gotta find an ATM and it's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, anyways, I always miss doing the show and I'm glad that uh, Gene and Ryan are doing it, uh, the beginning of it for me. Hope you enjoy the episode. Lots of love. I'll give you another update soon. Oh, there you have it. So as you know, Josh Potter can't come. I do know. And I think if there's any place in the world... The world, Christina. Yeah. And have the you been to infamous, Amsterdam? I have. Yeah, and have you been to the Red Light District? I, I was 16 years old. I, <laughs> I made a soccer team that was like a, uh, you know, one of those Olympic developmental teams. They have a bunch of these teams. It was a, I, was under, uh, I was under 17, a USA teams, not team. I want to be real clear about that. Um, it was like a regional one and we went over and we went to Amsterdam and I went to the red light district and at 16 years old, I saw shit. I still haven't yeah. seen today. Same. Yeah. Can you bring up image? Let's see if we can, cause I think people should see this. It's pretty fascinating. When I went, I was filming that sh uh, Showtime thing with Bert, Bert Chrysler. Oh yeah. The fattest, That's most right. racist <laughs> comedian working today. We did a Showtime thing and I don't know, what was that? De a decade ago, maybe now. And uh, it's fascinating. There you go. As you can see, so yeah. the women, they kind of, they stand in these glass boxes with doors on them. And they, a cat, and, the, and inside that little room, there's a sink and a bed. And then they open the door, they knock on the glass, and they kind of cat call to the men walking through the streets. And it's just rows and rows and rows and rows. And a lot of these are really beautiful women from the Ukraine, from, <laughs> from all over. I think Yoshi loves Amsterdam um, for this reason. And what's really cool, if, if, did you ever see the alarm go off? No. So what happens sometimes if a John skips out and doesn't pay, an alarm goes off, oh. and you see the pimps and all, like, they, these women are protected, and the cops and everybody, they run, and they get the guy, and they beat the shit out of him. It's pretty fucking amazing. Um, so I'm so curious to see which one of these fine ladies uh, Josh ch will choose. Now, when I was there, too, I believe I asked, I asked one of the prostitutes what her rate was, and I think she said... 50 or 60 euro for anything. And that was in the red light district. And what is that in U.S. dollars? <sighs> Maybe like a hundred bucks. That's it? Yeah. Oh, my that, God. I don't even know if what the exchange is. If he, Maybe a hundred bucks. I mean, they are going to the capital of make you come right yeah. now. So <laughs> on planet Earth. I know. Would you, Except for maybe some places in Asia. Asia, too. Yeah. I think, isn't Thailand a big yeah. one? Wherever my dad goes is kind of <laughs> like, the, the, the Philippines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wonderful locations. Uh, he go, it's for the culture. He's going to enjoy the right, scenery, yeah, 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 the yeah. museums in Thailand. <laughs> well, if it doesn't happen here, I mean, good luck, Josh. Good luck. I know. I'm curious which chick he's going to pick. I know. I can't wait to see his taste. Because they are very aggressive. I, I have a feeling he's going to go for the one, because it's like a musical. They, they knock on the door. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. And then they'll be like, "Come here, come here. You with the you with the hat. Mm -hmm. You with the glasses. You look like you da 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 da." They do solicit. So I have a feeling it's going to be a woman who's very persistent, persuasive. I don't know what Josh's type is. Does, does he have like? Does he like blondes or brunettes? Do we know? I think he just likes vaginas. Yeah, I was going to say. I don't think he's picky. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am so excited. Tom sent in a second video. Did he not? Yeah, there is a second one. Go check your email. He said he sent in a second one. Uh, have you ever seen a hooker? Ever seen one? Have you ever been with a hooker? I've never been with one, but I've seen You've them seen a them. lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, This is a place in Baltimore I used to go eat, and the um, truckers would go, and that was the host stroll <laughs> for the truckers. <laughs> that was true. Yeah. Um, Chaps Pit Beef, shout out Chaps. <laughs> lot they're, they're the be Let me tell you something. The best pit beef <laughs> in the probably the world. It's the red light district of pit beef. But right there where a lot of the truckers would come through, they would stroll, right? Just on the median. Just yeah, on the, you know, yeah. like on the grass. <laughs> right there, you know, like, and I was sucks. like, man. Well, that's the great part about Amsterdam uh, and that district is like, look, it, this is always going to happen. Yes. You may as well protect it 
put commodify it, tax There's it. There's a certain class protect the to women. it. You know, upscale class to it. It's not. Oh, you think like it's a, the same video? It's not. It's not. I, I don't think know. so. Let I me th- take I, a look on my phone. Yeah, I think it was just uh, you sent it on iCloud and then you sent it as an actual attachment. Ah, like, so I don't think there's a follow-up. No, he to... said another vid to play. How huh, done? No, yeah, that that was where I downloaded oh. it from. Oh yeah, okay, sorry. I was making sure we didn't miss out on a word of my. No, yeah, I'm sure next week on the next episode we'll be getting an update. I cannot <laughs> I fucking can't wait. What happened just on. now? What do you think? Do you think it's gonna happen? Ooh, um, I don't know, cause I don't think it's that you know the thing that's holding Josh back is well, you know, she doesn't want to do what. I want. Yeah. I don't think that's his problem. So, although a hooker will do whatever you want, that doesn't solve Josh's problem. It doesn't solve the problem. I think the problem is intimacy. I think he needs to really connect with somebody and then uh, and feel loved and sh- and supported and then he can relax. Well, I mean, I, th- I think like these these hookers they're pretty good at role play, right? I mean, they are professionals. Maybe But they- you don't have much time. Like you get in there and Sorry, what were you going to say? I interrupted no, you. No, 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 no. Just that they could fake. Fake being a mom? Yeah, fake, you know, fake <laughs> showing <mom>. support. <laughs> mom. That's not what Hurry I said. Up. The kids are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fold this laundry while you hit it from behind. <laughs> but, you know, like role playing, like intimacy and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, before getting into it, just like, how's your day? You know, stuff like that. But I got to tell you, so you saw those booths, right? It, they're literally tiny glass rooms like the one you guys are in. And there's a sink and then a twin bed. And then you go, you go in, she closes the curtain. So, like, you know, you're in a foreign environment. It's uh, ugh. And I imagine she just, like, washes her hand. Her I don't think that's a problem for Josh. Plus, yeah. I don't think being in a foreign environment is. I think she's going <laughs> to shove a thumb up his ass and he's going to come buckets. That's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> I think she's going to unleash a fucking demon out of that kid. <laughs> I'm going to suggest Tom do more than one because if he can't. Come Agreed. with one. It could be her. Yeah. It could be her if you just try. And to maybe him getting so pent up and built up, like he's gonna have to release. Oh, that's the method. That's the method, right? Like he's gonna have to jizz at some point. Otherwise, it's gonna hurt, right? You can get blue balls if you don't bust nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But he, but but he could do that. You do. Yeah. It that's how he no, usually. But he we, says that's how he usually does it, though. Is that he we, goes with the woman and then he finishes off. But himself. we don't let him do it himself. We just keep going and finding <laughs> <laughs> another chick. Put his and, hands in casts. Yeah, it's like when you're toilet, you're potty training, pull-ups aren't an option. Nope. You have to use the toilet. Mm-hmm. So wait, you're saying Tom should take him to his first prostitute and yes. before he busts, be like, no, wait, Josh, stop. I'm going to take you to the next one now. No, no, he can, if he doesn't bust with the first one, hold that nut. You're not allowed to touch it. We're going we're gonna to ride this bitch until you bust nuts how with many, one of these bitches. We're just going to go down the road, dude. How many hookers do you think they're going to go through in one night? I don't know. As much money as Tommy's got. I don't, Josh can end up getting jumped into the Amsterdam gang. <laughs> they fuck him. Then none of them will respect him over there at the red like this. Like, Pugh, fuck you, Josh. <laughs> you fucked all of us here. We don't respect you. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Well, <clears throat> good luck, Josh. I hope you come. I can't wait to get good the update. Luck, I cannot wait to get the update. We have a fun clip. Um... Let's tee this up. What's going on here, Nadav? Okay, so uh, this is a video of, uh, of a guy. There's no volume on this. So, Christina, I want you oh, shit, to give really? a play-by-play of what's happening. Okay. All right, there's a guy in a, behind a jewelry counter. Ca- looks like a counter of some kind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wait, did it already happen? Yep. So there's just a guy casually standing there at a cash register, and there's just a pile of shit under him. And he's in flip flops. Oh, oh. fuck! And he's standing in the poo, dude. Why do you wear flip flops? Never wear flip flops in public. So yeah, here, like, so oh, we're gonna let's watch see it again. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, Cause, go. Because I, I have a, it. I, I'm fascinated by this video. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, look! For oh, it. oh. check this part out. This is the, this is the professional move. Hold on, <sighs> hold on. Checking his phone like nothing happened. Oh, that fuck. is so crazy. <laughs> I wish I was that composed when I shit myself. I know, right? Oh my! Yeah, because it's like I, like I, like I told you, I said on the show that I shit myself this year. Yeah, Uh, I shared one, you know, I think one instance, but I cannot check my phone. I cannot look anything. My face looks like I just shit myself. Of course, this guy is a pro. Bolt. He's done this before. 
Yeah. And he knows that the move is to just look on your phone. You know, if the smell doesn't hit oh, you. Oh, God, the smell. How could it yeah. not? Well, this is diarrhea. This is not yeah, a lock. That's got to be This instant. is an emergency. This is an emergency. Yeah, let's look at it Because Oh. F- look at these moves. Oh, God. Look, yeah, he I goes. Mean, look at it. You know what it is? Oh, and oh, I, eyebrows oh, don't oh, even oh, raise. Oh, and I saw the yeah. pant waffle. Oh. Like, I saw the movement of the short. So I think he went to fart and he sh- and he sharded. Look, look. I agree. Watch the wind. Oh, well, we, there's a, there's yeah, a we'll slight. we'll start at the beginning again. Yeah. Let's look at the. See how. Oh, see? Yeah. He farts. And then. Whoa. He yeah. slides it back. Wow, you saw the up. fart. Thank you. I'm the brown Whoa. detective. You are the brown detective. Brown lock. Let me tell you. Oh. Because I've done this. This is exactly what happens when you brown like that. Because one time I was standing in the kitchen oh, without no. underwear on and I was wearing my pajama bottoms and I farted and this exact thing happened, but it didn't come out the bottom. I just sharded all over my legs. And it was liquid? Yeah. Like, it was just like, like that. this liquid? Yes. And I, because I had pizza the night before from this place. Anyway, the thing is, it's shocking at first because you're trying in your mind. You're like, yeah, but I just farted. There's no way there's brown. But it's only a fart. Like, he's still going, it's just a fart. It's just a fart. And then he goes, oh, my God, it's not. Pretend, like, be cool. Be you cool. don't think he felt the hot brown on his leg? And, yeah. And underneath his foot between his flip-flop? Now he does, yeah. But at the first moment of denial, see, he's farting. He's pushing. There it is. There's the wind. Oh, oh. And now? Now he knows. He looks down. He confirms it. Oh, fuck. And he's looking around like, did anyone see that? Out comes Get the, the phone. phone. Yep. <sighs> Wow, I could watch this Look, clip guy, forever. Yeah, the guy working doesn't smell it yet. Doesn't smell it yet. So actually, I'm I'm That's wondering if when that guy smells it and if he accuses him. I know. Does is there does this video go any longer? No, that's the whole video. Because I want to know I mean, what this guy does after he's accused. Yes. Did you just shit? Does he play it off like, hey, that was here when I got here? No matter what he says, it's on their camera. Oh no, <laughs> that, that is mounted up I here know. in the store. <laughs> I mean. I want to know. Fess what, up. This is like this is a nail biter. I am more excited to see what happens here. Oh, oh. God damn! He slides it with his. Oh, and he's sloshing it. God, it, oh, it's God damn it! Dude. <laughs> so but I feel incomplete. I have to know what happens. Is that the end of it? Is there no saying. more of that? There That's the whole all? video. It is. Here's what I would do. I would come clean immediately. Why don't you just come clean and be like, bro? I just say, come clean it up. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you come clean, then yeah. they're gonna be like, here's a mop. Yeah. Clean up yeah. your shit. Hey, be like, sorry. The question is, Happens are you okay with doing that, or just kind of pawn it off on someone or, that works there? I might do what he's doing. Actually, it's yeah. just being like, all right, dude, thanks, bye bye now, and then just track. I mean. You're tracking. I think, yes. I think this guy's You're, gone through enough trial and error to know this is the path of least resistance. Yes. If you try to sprint right now, you risk slipping in that. Oh my god! And falling right there, all in it, and then you're busted. Can I? If you tr- if you hustle out of there, you'll track little shit footprints all the way Ooh. out the door. Ooh. I mean, you gotta just, you gotta own that. But like, listen, own, man, yeah. I know wh- while you're dusting off that thing right there, can you uh, <laughs> point me to your restroom because I gotta finish the shit I just took <laughs> on your floor. <laughs> Can I finish the shit I just started in your store in the restaurant? But so, then I'll come back. So Ryan, you you would confess to it immediately? <laughs> I would have to. I just I would know that. Look, in today's world, if you don't think there's a camera on you wherever you are at any second, you're a fool. So I would fess up to that because I would know. Plus, the way I am, I already saw that camera when I walked in that yeah, store. I, know. I know that thing's there. This is the most compelling argument. This is why I get so upset when I see people wearing flip flops in the streets. This is the most compelling argument why you should be wearing <laughs> fucking closed toe shoes, dude. I'm serious. Like when I go to New York City in the middle of summer and I see people walking in flip flops, I'm like, there is nasty shit on the floor. There's fucking hypodermic needles, garbage, dog shit, human shit. You got to wear shoes, bro. You could shit your pants. Hold on. So the reason to wear flip flops is because you might shit your pants yes. and it might get in your flip flop. Of course. Oh, this is the, the. I'm telling you, the worst part of this cleanup is his feet. Are his feet. I agree. The worst part of this cleanup today is getting that out of that get out of it, his foot. Getting it up out of that pinky toenail that's stuck up in there. I'm gonna throw it. That's how you get gout and shit. Thanks for sharing. Um, what else do we have? By the way, who's joining us on this episode afterwards? Uh, this one, uh, Yaakov Smirnov oh, is going to be on this one. Oh, you're going to love this. Uh, so Tom will join. Uh, as you see, we kind of piece these things together separately. Tom will be here for the Yaakov Smirnov. He was such a great interview. You guys are going to be very pleasantly astonished, actually, I was, and just how sensitive and intelligent and wonderful 
um, Yakov was. I still think about that interview that we did it a couple weeks ago, and I still think about him, and I, I just love him. Remember him from the eighties? He's yeah, very, we very had famous. him on uh, um, the Crab Feast, but oh, he was fantastic. God, I, I love him. His, his stories are amazing. Let's do Tommy's dates first, since I did mine first last time. Okay, Tom Seguera, out on the uh, the road. God damn, my sweet love, my sweet fire love. Okay, so T is in Amsterdam tonight. He's going to be in Paris, London, Salford, Dublin, Kingston, New York, 11-6, he returns. And then November 7th, he's in New York again. Uh, two shows. They added a show at the Beacon Theater. And then Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, on the 8th of November. That's our band, Smurfrini. And then November 9th, Buffalo, New York, uh, the 10th. Syracuse at the Landmark Theater, November 13th, Chartlet <laughs> at the Evans Auditorium, <laughs> November 14th, Pensacola, and then uh, November 15th, Lake Charles, Louisiana, November 16th, Austin, Texas, uh, two shows there, the 17th again, Austin at the Paramount Theater, and then the 29th, Melbourne, Florida, that's right after Pink Gaming, uh, the 30th, he's in Miami, and then uh, we go into December. Holy shit. Erie, Columbus, Columbus, Grand Rapids. And then Windsor, Ontario. My birth. That is my birth city. Woo woo. And then Honolulu for New Year's. Very exciting. Tickets for Tommy are tomsegura.com. Uh, myself, I'm going to be doing flappers in the Yoohoo Room, a residency every Thursday. Come see me. I'm just like throwing shit against the wall. I'm just talking to people in the room, you know, figuring it out. Uh, Seattle, Portland, November 22nd and 23rd. Tickets are almost completely gone for that. And then into 2020. Uh, let's do this. January 30th, Houston Improv. March 13th, Miami Improv. March 26th, Addison Improv in Dallas. April 3rd and 4th, Caroline's at Jew Dork Titties. And I think I'm going to have Shuli from the Howard Stern Show opening for me, Caroline's, which I'm so excited about. April 24th and 25th, Des Moines at the Funny Bone in Iowa. And then June 12th through 13th, Phoenix, Arizona at Stand Up Live. Tickets at Christina P. Online. Thank you very much. God bless you. Oh, merch. Do we have anything to plug-wise, merch-wise? Check out the store, uh, tomsegura.com slash, is it merch? Store. No, store. TomSquare.com slash store for all. Click on that, mommy. What's the link? Merch. Uh, if you, yeah, if you go to MerchMethod.com slash Tom Segura, you'll see mm -hmm. everything that we have for sale. Two bears, one cave shirts, tour shirts, posters, hats, wear the bodies G shirts, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Drew after Drew. dark shirts. Just so much stuff. So much stuff. Uh, do you have anything to plug? Uh, when does this come out? I don't know. Next, next week. week. Uh, yeah, Denver. Come see me, Denver. Um, at the Comedy Works South, oh. November 21st through the 23rd. Sounds good. Uh, listen to the honeydew. Listen to where my mom's at. Yeah. Enjoy this part coming up with Yakov Smirnoff. Thank you for uh, listening, downloading, and ta-ta their TikToks. Until next time. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have this guest with us here today. I feel like you were a huge part of my life. My parents adored you. I adore you. <laughs> Thank you. Grew up with you. And I can't believe I'm having like the privilege to sit here and be in the same space as you. So please welcome Yakov Smirnov. Come on, yeah, everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello. No, it's awesome, man. <laughs> it's amazing Thank that you. you're Thank here. You. Thank you. And I'm honored to be here. I oh. admire your work. And so it's. It's great that uh, to see what you guys accomplished and how comfortable it is to be here. So, well, thanks, thank man. You. I mean, it's it's so fun to be. I mean, still like we talk about it all the time. Our favorite thing is to hang out with comedians, you know. Yes. And um, I I love like when a comedian has been doing it longer than me <laughs> and is still like I feel like loves like you you love doing stand up. I love know? it. And totally. that that's inspiring to me, Thank you, you know. Thank so, you. I really yeah. en I enjoy that, man, cuz you know, we both um remember, you know, being kids and uh seeing, you know, at when you're a kid, you get exposure is seeing like a one of the stand up shows, you know, right. like uh live at the improv or, Yeah, or a Rodney Danger Rodney yes. yes. And yeah. and like uh yeah, you're one of the pioneers mm -hmm. of what's today like such a huge art form. Yeah. Stand up's so popular. Yes. But it's because of guys like you who like well, paved that way, man. Well thank you. Thank and you. who did it in not their native language. That's another which is level. 
Yeah. But so for those of you who don't know, the reason I'm so familiar with you and loved you so much, my parents escaped from communism in 1969 from Hungary. Oh. Okay. So for those listening, a lot of people don't remember, but the Russians had annexed much of Central Eastern Europe. Yes. And um, so I, I had nothing to you do with that right. personally. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. blame you. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. it's okay. Um, so my par- my parents essentially, you know, we had to learn to speak Russian. The Russian, the communists didn't allow freedom of religion or any of that stuff. And sure. food was hard to come by. It was a very messed up time. Um, but they escaped. And seeing you on television, and you were from, what part of Russia are you? I'm from uh, Ukraine. Ukraine? Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah. Oof, deep. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> You're in, you guys are in the news all the time. Now. Yes, yeah. we are. Yes, we are. Yeah. But, but it's Where? interesting. Where? Yeah, like specific, oh, Odessa. Odessa, Odessa the yes. Black sea. Yeah. That's its own yeah. language, yeah. too. Yes. You guys speak your own. Yes. Thing. And you had, Odessa. even though you had shortages in uh, Hungary and you didn't have anything close to our shortages. Really? You know, oh my goodness. You guys we got were, it worse than we did. We were dreaming to go to Hungary, <laughs> oh, you know. Shit. We were hungry to go to <laughs> Hungary. <laughs> Man. But yeah. how's, how does it, like, I mean, the whole idea of just, you know, uh, immigrating and, and, and that is in and of itself is a thing. But how do you even entertain the idea of, um, like, were you a fan of stand-up? Actually, I was a successful comedian there. I was 26 when I left. So I was doing comedy since I was like 15. Stand-up was what? big there? Or but how? Well, it there was no big. freedom of speech. That's correct. How did you That's do correct. it? Well, we had, when you become, when you want to be a professional comedian, you have to submit your material to Department of Jokes. And it's part <laughs> of Minister of Culture, right? And they have Department of music department of dance department all the departments and bureaucrats are basically telling you this you can't do this do they give you any notes like oh, creatively yeah. what or are just the guys? Like, no, not, not like, creative they're just like this no. is not gonna hit yeah no. this is not gonna happen this is not gonna happen you know and and you push the envelope just a little bit but you can get in big trouble if you, well, if you, yeah. you end up in a gulag somewhere. That's yeah? right. That's no, right. literally. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it was happening during my time. It was just you would get fired or get fired at. But um, they weren't killing people or putting them away during that time in the 60s. and so. But we got this information from our mother's milk that don't mm-hmm. say anything because people right. disappeared and in in thousands and thousands just by telling a, a wrong joke or wrong story or anything well let me stop you real quick because we're so used to the infrastructure of the american comedy scene meaning yes. like there's you know there's clubs all over the country sure. and, and it's such a big thing now back then when you're like I'm, i was already a successful comedian yes how often were you doing shows and where were you doing shows well uh, everything was owned by the government uh-huh. so um including theaters and including clubs lounges and bars yeah that... no there was very little it was very straightforward it's n- normally a you know 2000 or 1000 seat theater okay there's no alcohol there's not you know but it's go. popular it's obviously a, a thing it's enough to, to i eventually i was doing okay you yeah. know and then i started working on the cruise ships i call it the love barge but it was still <laughs> <laughs> it was still that's great. a cruise ship and that's uh where i was able to perform and that's where i got introduced to idea even because we were not allowed to see or communicate or be with anybody from outside Soviet Union. So foreigners who would come, they would make sure that the KGB was around them. So there was no contact because, well, they didn't want you to get polluted by their thoughts. The way you control the, the socialist society is by cutting off the information from the outside. So religion is gone. Uh, no contact with anybody outside, and then TV just pumps the propaganda towards you. Yeah. And in our case, you know, I, I tell a joke that we had two channels. Channel one was propaganda. <laughs> channel two, there was a KGB officer telling you turn back to channel one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's that was our reality, and uh, we didn't know anything. And here I get on the cruise ship, and I was. So first of all, had my own room. I mean, uh, prior to that, I lived in a communal apartment 
with nine families in one which apartment. Is, which is, by the way, something that the communists did. They came and they the government would take over private property, exactly. right? So now if you had a nice big house, let's say you were a successful person, the government would go, well, guess what? We're going to take this house and yes. now all these other families are going to come live with That's you. That's right. So they, the government would take over, which is yeah. bad crazy. shit, crazy. Crazy, yeah. crazy. And so each family had a room in the apartment. So it could be like a library or a den or a bedroom or whatever. It, and so there was nine of nine families in one apartment. Yeah. So I tell a joke, you know, when, when my parents wanted to be romantic and we were living in the same room, they would send me to look out the window. And then my dad would say, so what do you see in the window? I said, our neighbor's being romantic. And he said, how can you tell? I said, because their son is looking at me. <laughs> so that was our, that was the, the life that we lived. No phone, no car, uh, long lines for food. It was just normal Soviet um, existence. Yeah. And how long does it take between the first thought of I'm going to leave and actually, you know what I mean? Like when, yes. when do you start going like, I'm going to, I'm going to get out, out of here. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you an interesting story that, that happened that triggered for me that thought. Um, I was working in the cruise ship and um, they offered me one gig for a week mm -hmm. to, just to test me. And I did a good job and they asked me to go again. And I said, well, I've been touring um, and I haven't seen my parents for about a year, so I'd like to bring them on the boat. Or if you can pay me, then I can buy a cabin for them as well. And they were just shocked that I even requested anything like that. And they just said, get the hell out of here. There's really? no way. Yeah, there's no way you ever. We have hundreds of people like you. Get out. So I left and I go home and um, I tell my parents, you know, and then I tried and they kicked me out. And so we kind of accepted that as normal Soviet life. Mm -hmm. And then two hours later, um, they knock on the door, a messenger comes in with two sets of, of tickets for my parents and mm -hmm. for me. And I'm like, I never heard of anything. My parents are like, we never heard of anything like that happening. What, what's going on? So we get on board and I asked the cruise director, I said, what happened? He said, well, the ship normally is leased to some other foreign countries, you know, could be Britain, could be America, could be. So captain and others like <clears throat> upper crew goes with the ship. So they learned some things from capitalists. And uh, I guess when the captain found out that I'm not going to be on the ship, he went back to the company and said, even if you need to give him my own cabin, mm. I want him on the ship. Really? And I, uh, yes. And I swear to you, I, I went, wait, I said to the cruise director, I said, wait, let me, let me get this. Hold on. I, don't, I never heard this. Are you saying that there are places in the world, if people are more talented and they can <laughs> do something more than the average person, that they will get rewards? <laughs> I, I know it sounds yeah. crazy. Right, you grow up, you yeah. grow up yes. with it. We never heard of it. My parents yeah. never heard of it. So that was the light bulb went, wow, we need to get out of here. <laughs> and that's how it started. Holy shit. Can I take man. one step back? Sure. Those jokes that you told us, yes. were those approved by the, the Ministry of Humor? No. No. What, most what are of the them, guidelines like? Uh, the guidelines, you can't talk about politics, government, sex, religion. The rest, <laughs> the rest is fine. You there's know, I mean, else to talk there's about. like mother-in-law jokes and yeah, animal, yeah. animal jokes. And it just, it's, it's really very limited. But there was an interesting art form that, to be able to come up with material that would be acceptable by the bureaucrat, but people could hear behind the joke. Right, they heard the double something meaning. different. Yeah, right. And so that was an art form that was kind of that really makes you work at it, though. Y y you have to, yeah. yeah. But it was a great training in comedy to be able to have a limited amount. It's like. Uh, the, an athlete who trains for Olympics and you run in the sand, 
because that's harder. Sure, yes. That's right. And then you show up on normal, you know, you're runway like, oh, and you're good. Yeah. So when mm -hmm. you go through that ship experience where you're like, oh, people get rewarded for being talented, it plants a seed in your head. Yes. And then how long from then until you actually... Do you escape, by the way? No, no, no. no. They, there was a window that I, because I was in that environment that people were talking to me, I was previewed to some information that most people were not because uh, Jimmy Carter was at that time, uh, was very much for human rights and, and he said, and the Russians were starving. So they, he said, you show some human rights and allow people out and we will give you some wheat. So mm. we were exchanged for some tons of wheat, you know, <laughs> really? literally. <laughs> they, they exported so you yeah. in exchange so for how old, are you, how old are you when that I happened? was 26 when wow. we left, yeah. Did yeah. you leave with your parents? Parents, yeah. yeah. <gasps> yeah. yeah. That's so fortunate. It was, but it yeah. was also another trick that the Soviet government did. They would say, if a young person wants to leave, they have to take their parents <laughs> with them. Mm -hmm. because they didn't want to take care of the parents, right. Right? right? But it was a trick because most older parents did not want to go. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. m most of the time the answer would be, no, we're not going. Right, because they and, don't want to pick up and leave when they're 70. Exactly, yeah. and my, my dad was into listening to Voice of America, he was... That's what my dad listened to. It, uh, That's what inspired him. I think Americans should listen to Voice yeah. of America sometimes. That's what my dad said, I want to come to America because of yeah. that. He yeah. would get that one show. Yes, yes. And the Beatles, too, is yeah. Britain. But yeah. yeah, he loved it. And Coca-Cola. Yeah. He would find somewhere to get a bottle of Coca-Cola yes. with my mother, and that was just like, <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go to America. Because <laughs> it was so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't have... I remember making a bootleg copies of the Beatles because they were outlawed in the Soviet Union <laughs> because they had long hair and yeah. that would not be, yeah, yes, that it's music true. Just like the gays. Just, yep. like the gays. Right. Just like radio the gays. Radio free, right. yeah, radio free. Free Europe. Europe. Yeah. That's my dad yeah. listened to yeah. and listen to the Beatles yeah. on there. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So okay. you, but they, they come with you and where do you, land we land in new york in new york yeah and you set up york. shop there you like you guys well paid? we didn't have anything so it, we literally what the soviet government wanted to do is to give an example of how terrible it is <laughs> to consider <laughs> leaving oh, you know right. they're yeah. like rats leaving the ship you know it's like so they would make everything that, it took us two years to get out and the first thing they do they fire you from work Mm -hmm. And so you have no means. So most people watching this struggle go, oh, I'm not doing that. And so we were able to, my dad was an inventor and he was able to create something that really gave us an opportunity to get out. And, and so uh, we had a little bit of money to survive this. Most people didn't. So when we come to America and they exchange us, when we left, they exchanged each person a hundred dollars you could have to take with you. That's it. Jesus. And then a couple of suitcases of clothing and just whatever, you know, necessities. And that's it. And that's how we came to New York. So by the time we got there, we didn't, now what did uh, your folk, cause they're, you know, older than you, what do they think of New York when you get there? Well, it was mixed emotion. My dad was very excited. Mom was still scared. She didn't think I'll be able to. I didn't speak English, so yeah. I was the only person, you know, who could make a living. And they, you know, I had to start from scratch. So there was a lot of fear from her. Yeah. And it was obviously on all of us. We felt very excited on one hand, but also very scared. Sure. You know, and. Uh, so at one point, mom was like saying, I, I don't know how, what my purpose here is. There I knew my purpose. Right. I could go to a store for milk. I can go to a store for bread. I stand in line. Right. I get food for my family, and I feel productive. Uh, here you can walk into a, a supermarket and get everything you need f in an hour or for a week. And she said, what am I going to do here? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah I know. It's a problem. Right. First world problem. First world problem. And yeah. I said, mom, there's DNV. You can go stand in line just to, 
<laughs> just to feel at home, you know? So yeah, yeah, so, but little by little, they both got. And did you write, I mean, well, so you don't speak English, so you gotta start working How on. did you learn English? I went, I got, uh, I saw an ad that um, was um, advertising bartending school. And I remember that in the cruise ship, bartenders were in the same room as I was performing. They were just on the other side of the room. And I thought, oh, that would be cool. If I become a bartender, then I can learn the language and then just start performing. That, that, that was just intuitively, I just came up with that. And, but I didn't speak English. So, but, and they needed $200 to, to go to that school, which was hard to get, but somehow we scraped it and find it. And I went to bartending school for two weeks, got the de degree of mixologist, <laughs> and I had no idea what I was talking. I mean, I didn't speak, so I would bring a tape recorder, um, which was like a big tape recorder, and I would record all the lessons, and then I managed, I. I was relentless that I'm gonna learn the language. So I, w I knew that if I have a girlfriend that's American, then she will teach me yeah. how to speak English. And so I, could, I would walk up to strangers or to people I knew and I said, do you have a girlfriend for me? <laughs> I swear. And at, at one point, somebody yeah. said, you know what, I know somebody who might be interested in you. And so we met and we liked each other. And so she lived in New York near United Nations and I would bring my tape recorder. My school was on 42nd Street and Fifth Avenue. I would walk over, bring my tape recorder, and then she would buy some, you know, drinks and we would mix them and drink them. And so I was learning English and learning about American women at the wow. same time. And yeah. how are they different from Russian women? Um, oh, wow, that's, a, that's an interesting topic. Um, I think American women are more, a lot more, they had a lot longer time for women's lips, so they are a lot more open in sexually and not the Russian women are a lot more conservative. Uh -huh. So, and especially in those days, it was like, you mean I, I do that with you? Wait, how's that work? You know, whatever. It was just all new to me. Sure. But so this I is kinda, way more fun. I like yeah, it. those yeah. American yeah. sluts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Loose American women. What a country. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Because back, back in the back in the Ukraine, back in Odessa. Yes. I mean, did you have to get married to hook up in that culture? Uh, like it was more stringent. Yeah. It like, was much more stringent. Yeah. And I actually dated a Hungarian girl okay. at one point. That Again. I met on the cruise ship. How, How was that? that? Yutka was her name. Oh, that was my stepmom. Yeah. Is that right? Beautiful. What was What's her last that? name? Nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> she was I don't nice, know. though, right? <laughs> yeah. I, very nice. Nice tits very situation. Nice tits. Nice everything, teats, nice was, ass. everything was That's nice. That's what my dad yes, always said yeah. about my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Nice teats, nice ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so did you but like But being the in the communal apartment to yeah. wait for your parents you invite the girl and, yeah, and uh, you know it's it, you have to send them to the movies yeah and and they show up early and the whole thing it just yeah it, well my dad and says this country's just straight up hose yeah right? hose yeah. Yeah. my dad told me back in in budapest that they the, the kids would just make out in the park like that's yes. what the there's this island called the margitziget island and it's where teenagers just yes. basically fuck in the park yeah yeah <laughs> and they would and the police would walk around with flashlights <laughs> Not flashlight, but a flashlight, <laughs> yeah. and just and the point that you know, and you're like, um, yeah. break it out, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 So you've off. got what's your who's your first American girlfriend? Do you remember her name? Uh, Naomi was her name. That's oh, the cute. yeah, Naomi, and she was a registered nurse, so I felt safe um, <laughs> in in that way. And she was, uh, she was a great person to be with and uh, she was taking me to different places. For her, it was uh, great to show um, an, a new person America. And, uh, and for me, it's per it was perfect for what I, what I needed. But this is also during the Cold War, yeah? No, yes, so, yes. so we're Americans kind of like, whoa, Ruski. 
kick rocks. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like we don't. I never felt no, that. No, no anti-Russian. I, no, for some reason, maybe I don't know. It just, I just actually was embraced because there was so much tension between the United States and the Soviet Union and yeah. the images that you guys were growing up with, Brezhnev yeah. with one eyebrow and, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. and Khrushchev banging his shoe on the, yeah. on the podium yeah. at the United Nations. All of that was like, you know, and here I show up and I'm kind of likable, funny guy and yeah. I tell jokes at the bar and then people tip me and I go, yeah, that was a good one, you know, yeah. so... <laughs> You know, and uh, that's, uh, I never felt. That How about was, now? How about in this current climate? It's still, it's still somehow I've been very blessed to not get to be, you know, I'm, I'm not colluding, you know. Right. I was probably, <laughs> I was probably the only guy who was not interviewed by Mueller, you yeah. know. So, um, so yeah. I guess, you know, that somehow I have a pass, you know, yeah. to be able to. And, and now I'm kind of, I'm excited to share with Americans when I go to the comedy store or I do show at my theater in Branson, I have an opportunity to share with Americans what socialism can be like. And, and yes, it was an extreme form, but socialism is socialism. It just, it just doesn't work with capitalism. And that is an opportunity for me to just say, hey, guys, let me draw you a picture of what it was like. So, so what, how do you feel about like the, you know, a big part of a lot of the <laughs> Democratic candidates, you know, platforms? I'm nervous. Socialist nervous. ideas. Nervous. Really? Yes. When I also, when I see polls and it says that 60% of millennials are in favor of socialism, it scares me because they're not realizing the cycle that happens. Mm -hmm. It just, it's so romantically attractive, this... Universal free health care and free yeah. tuition. But nobody's explaining how do you get there. And the only way the socialists know how to get there is to c collectivize or take the, the private property and make it collective property. Mm -hmm. And then they can rule and then they become dictators because that's the only, that's what breeds that. You know, do you guys know what Fidel Castro, when he passed Great away guy. a year ago? Yes. Great guy. <laughs> Great guy. Um, uh, do you know what his net worth was when he passed away? No. Nine hundred million dollars. And you go. It's a lot yeah. of cigars. Country. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah, pays to be a dictator, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also, you and I. Briefly I know a lot of Cuban uh, people who, you know, firsthand like growing up in Florida, mm -hmm. who, uh, you know. Grew up had in that their, fun regime, yeah, and, no and shoes. had their uh, homes taken, and, you know, their cousin was killed, and, yes. you know, all, all that shit. Well, yes. also, you and I discussed at the Comedy Store briefly the culture of monitoring other people's language, yes. censoring comedians, yes. and what we just had with the SNL thing, a kid getting fired yes. before he was hired because of yes. some stuff he said on a podcast yes. years ago. Yes. Um, how do you feel about that, too? Because you grew up in that culture as well. Well, I was censored by the Department of Jokes, so I had the extreme. Right. I saw the end of the movie. I, spo spoiler alert, it doesn't end well. Yeah. yeah. It does not yeah. because it encroaches very... Do you, uh, it's interesting. I learned that also not too long ago, if you Google this, um, that the political correctness originated 1917 by Vladimir Lenin. Wow, and little guy was named the, Lenin. Yeah, and it was the adherence to the Communist Party uh, policies and ideology. And if you veer off, you go to labor camp, you go to prison, you go, you, you disappear. And that's why Lenin is responsible for about five to six million people dead. Now, I grew up, he was our God. There was nothing. He never would hurt a fly. Right. Yeah, six million dead. Then Stalin came, he and really that's another forty million. Yeah, put it in fifth gear. Six exactly. gear. Yeah. So <laughs> I grew up with my parents. They lived through Stalin era. Aye, aye, so aye, it aye. was like, don't say please. Don't don't draw a picture of Statue of Liberty. Don't do anything that could be misconstrued by them, and then they take you. Because that's the other thing in those environments mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, your neighbor tells on you, you know, and the guy that smiles at you every day. Absolutely. Like, oh, he, Absolutely. My dad told me a story because it's 
at school they tell the little children report your parents if you hear even your parents saying something and it happened next door some kids just have you know you make a comment innocent, yeah. at home you have no idea and that's that parents yeah. are taken yeah. but uh but it's interesting yeah that this culture it's it, it's an infinite regress that's the fear like once you start censoring what people can say or getting them exactly. fired they exactly. disappear yeah. Exactly. That's what's scary yeah, about exactly. this culture. Exactly. You know? So I want to go back though to New York. You're you're making people laugh at the bar. Yes. How long does it take you to get back <laughs> on stage? Oh, um, I did a show. I started working. Um, I got hired at Grossinger's Hotel in the Catskills uh -huh. as a bar boy uh -huh. for dollar twenty an hour. Jesus man. Uh, and uh, my job was to just carry buckets of ice and stuff like that. And then. I was happy because, here's why, because the bar was called Pink Elephant Lounge, big, big, big bar. And then next door is a theater, like 2000, it's something I grew up, yeah. you know, performing it. So I'm going, if I just survive here, I can go in the break and watch comedians or mm -hmm. singers. So it was like a school, I was like, yeah, I'm there. And so, and I was learning English at the same time and little by little got a promotion as a bartender. And that's where it was more one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I was able to talk to people and got, my English got better. And then I got enough guts to go to the booker for the theater and I said, would you let me just do like a five minutes of jokes that I translated and tested on the, my customers and <laughs> all of that. What was your first set? Do you remember? I remember first joke that um, that in uh, there was a an exhibit of women underwear, <laughs> and uh, there it was international exhibit, and uh, uh, the um, American woman uh, came and asked for seven pair of underwear. And they said, why do you need seven pairs? So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, seven day of the week, I need. And the French woman came over and she said, I need five pair of underwear. And they said, why? And she said, well, because Saturday and Sunday, my, my husband is home, so I don't need underwear. <laughs> and next was a, a, a Russian woman and she asked for 12 pair of underwear. And they said, why? Well, January, February, <laughs> March. <laughs> <laughs> and so wait I love you, it they let you they're like yeah go ahead and do it like they uh, no, no what they did there there was a show uh, that they did in the afternoon uh it was Simon Says a game with the older folks who you know so there would be like a hundred people there playing Simon Simon Said and they said you can go before that guy you know guy and he He'll introduce you, and you can tell jokes. What a hot show! Hot show. <laughs> Simon but says. I was excited, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm yeah excited. of course. And then, the, right in the middle of it, as I told one or two jokes, and all of a sudden, a woman in the back is like, <gasps> and and I thought she was laughing. She had seizures. Oh shit! And oh, people, shit. this is how strange this uh, people. They take her in the, uh, <laughs> and they. <laughs> and they take her away. I used right? to have that on deck. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> that was pretty amazing, Tom. Uh, yeah. Gosh. And, and they're taking her away. And, and it was like one of those. And people come over. And they hit me on the back and going, you killed. <laughs> and I'm going, no, 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 not killed. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. So wait. So from there, though, are you, are you even planning or thinking about Los Angeles? Or, cause you I, know I wasn't the, for a while. I, I moved to Miami for a while because the business ends in the Catskills like in the winter time. Right. So everybody ma south, migrates yeah. south. And your parents come with you? No, stay parents in stayed in New York. And I started, um, uh, I worked there. The, the manager from, um, from Catskills wore a manager there and he gave me a job as a short order cook, which... <laughs> make no sense to me and <laughs> i mean what's a hamburger what's a red what's medium i mean i'm thinking oh it's mustard on the on the medium rare and the rare is just ketchup you know so <laughs> it's my mind so but i was i had a job and then i get an offer um this was something that neighbors in new york helped me um, figure out how to make a resume. And they were asking me, what did, what did you do? And I would say, 
you know, was performing the cruise ship. So they helped me come up with the resume and they took the initiative and send it out to different cruise ship companies. So I get a phone call from my mom in New York saying the Royal Caribbean wants you to come to get on the ship tonight. Tonight? Yeah, tonight. And it was like dream come true, I mean, because I, I associated the, um, the fun time that I had with Hungarian girl and, and, <laughs> and so I figured I'm, gonna, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going back on the cruise ship. Yeah. So, I, so I, get, I get there, but nobody interviewed me. They just said, <laughs> so get on, and, <laughs> and I get on, and then they realized that I, don't, I speak very little English. And my job was assistant of cruise director in, um, in entertaining, like do a, a show, a staff show, and my job was to be in charge of people, uh, excursions. Excursions, oh, yeah. which I didn't even know what that meant. Right, that's like right? when I take out the jet skis for the day. Or I want to go, or on or on the hike. buses, yeah, no, or yeah, get yeah. on the bus to go to some, some tour. activity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I have a hunch that there's still people in St. Thomas somewhere <laughs> looking for that bus because I sent them a the wrong way. But uh, I lasted one week because they couldn't get rid of me before they brought me back to Miami. Sure, that's the only reason. So they, I got fired. My first, jo- you know, my job to be fired. But it's really because you're at that point your lack of English, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm like really scared now. I got so I go back to New York, get a job in uh, greeting uh, uh, greeting bell company, which was some Russian um, people were making at home um, uh, some ornaments for Christmas trees. And this American lady uh, kind of organized all of this. So they were cheap labor and, and she was doing real well. And so she hired me as a shipping manager. But then the season was over and she goes, I don't have really money to pay you, but maybe if you go to Los Angeles, uh, I know somebody who knows somebody who um, is friends with producer, executive producer of Tree's Company, which was at that time a huge show. Huge. Right? huge. So, so I, I go, yeah, yeah, I go. So I, I bought a ticket for 10 days and I had a plan. I'm gonna go uh, to LA, I'm gonna become a star <laughs> and then- I love it. And then I'll be back, you know, uh, and I heard people making it overnight so I'm thinking I'll give myself 10 days just in case things don't go so well, right? And so I go, I go there and, um, and I get, uh, I need to showcase for this guy. So I go to the comedy store and, um, and the secretary gave me a spot and I, I was so excited. I'm going, oh, he's gonna come. And this is like day four, I'm ahead of schedule, I'm good. You know, he's gonna come. He's gonna tell me that I have a part in the series yeah. and everything will be great. And he didn't make it. He he left a message, can't make it. And I was like, oh. By the way, that is still the reality of every time they're like, guess who's coming out to see your set? I, it is. <laughs> it's like, it is. It, every time they're like, it's the director, it's the president uh, of this company. Never, and then you're happens. like, do they hear? They're like, they couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> they actually forgot they had dinner. <laughs> and you're like, oh. yeah, Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's uh, so. So, but I performed at the comedy know, store. At the comedy store. Hey, right. and did and so. But did, did Mitzi pro- Shore pass you? Yeah. At that? Well, she didn't pass me, but she uh, sent her secretary Chrissy. I remember her name uh, running after me uh, to say that she liked me. And so Chrissy runs after me, and she goes, "Mitzi liked you. Congratulations!" And I go, uh, "Who is Mitzi? I had no idea." And she goes, she's the owner of the comedy store, go sit, talk to her. So I go sit down, talk to her. And she said, stay in Los Angeles. There is always place for good and different. And I'm going, but I, I can't because my parents are in, you know, and I'm, yeah. I gotta go back. And, and she goes, come back tomorrow and see a regular show. And then you tell me. So I come back next day and I sit in the back of the, original room and 
and uh, first person on stage, they introduced Robin Williams, mm -hmm. and second followed by Billy Crystal, and then after that, Pryor showed up, and then Leatherman, and it was like, and I'm sitting there, I'm saying, I am ahead of schedule, I am already here, I, yeah. I made it, I, it was just like one of those moments, and I, and so then I said to Mitzi, you know, I don't, I don't have a job, I don't know how I'm gonna live here, and she goes, well, and your parents are in LA, and she goes, what does your dad do? I said, he was a building construction engineer, and said, if I give him a job as a carpenter, that would work for you, right? And I go, yeah. So I moved my parents, my dad got a job as a carpenter, I was helping him for two years. And she um, and he was working for her? For her, for Holy Mitzi, yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Building stuff, those booths, tables, what? stuff. Yeah, 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 no, the stuff that you guys wow. see at the comedy store. Your dad built. My dad and me, and then I took over because he wasn't really, yeah. he was older to, you know, to do certain things and I, so I, I stayed there for a long time. This was like one of my jobs was to go to her house, to Mitz's house, and put the doorknobs back on the doors that Paulie and Peter were taking off because they were smoking pot, and they didn't want her to walk in on them, so they would just take off these doorknobs and throw them away. They didn't even <laughs> store them anywhere. <laughs> throw them away. So my job was to go to the store, get new doorknobs, come back, put them on. It was a job security was there for me. Yeah. Because they were not going to stop, you know. <laughs> this is like a daily occurrence? Um, once, uh, a couple of times a week. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. hilarious. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, so you're going to the com, are you, you're a carpenter by day, and yeah. then you're at the store, like every um, night watching? I'm watching. And... I'm watching, and then little by little, Mitzi gives me like a, a spot, the original, and, and then um, when Robin was cast casted in the movie mask on hudson that's my yeah, movie yeah. that's so, the one i watched yeah, over and over yeah. with my dad and so god he, damn it i love that movie. he brought so paul masursky and that's how i got the part so it was like all organically evolving what did that know? feel like that had to feel yeah amazing. oh my yeah. goodness i it was like i again my english was still pretty soft and it was 1981 and I was making a major motion picture, and, and then I got a, a, a part with the Richard Pryor uh, in Brewster's Millions, yeah, and then I, oh I mean, God. it was just like, yeah, I was like, and I actually thought it was happening to everybody. I mean, <laughs> right. this is like, you know, you come here, you get the package, I did the movie with Meryl Streep and Jack Nicholson, and I'm like going, this is gonna continue forever. This is, yeah. you know, and then I get the White House calling, and I'm performing at the, for the president and I mean all of that was just like an American dream come true. I never expected anything like that, but I thought, well, I guess that's a normal thing now. Yeah, yeah. And then the Soviet Union collapsed. <laughs> right. Shit. I did not see the writing on the Berlin Wall at all. <laughs> and so all of a sudden I'm like uh, I'm realizing there's, you know, Leatherman has a top 10 list on the night of the collapse. And I make number one on the <laughs> list. Oh, no. Yakov Smirna will be out of work. What? Y yeah. Shit. And I thought it was funny. I'm going, oh, I'm still funny. What, what's going to happen? Nothing. Six months later, none of my contracts in Vegas, Atlantic City, Reno, Tahoe were renewed. None. Fuck. And I couldn't find a spot, even clubs. They, the people just kind of turned me off. And I realized later on what happened, I was meeting their need. I was like an aspirin from a headache of the Soviet Union. The headache goes away, they put an aspirin back on the shelf and you don't need it anymore. Wow. So I was desperate. I mean, we had two little kids, my, my wife and I, and no income and we live in Pacific Palisades and we can't afford the mortgage. So I start looking for a place where people did not know that the Soviet Union collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's really your thought? That's I well there was no other I mean, where else am I gonna go? Brilliant. I mean so Branson, Missouri. <laughs> they still don't know. <laughs> they still and and I'm not telling. Don't so, tell. Yeah, no, no. I'm I 
So I've had this theater now, 2000 seat theater for 25 years. So you went, you saw a theater there or you built oh, one? I, no, I rented one for a yeah. while because the money was short, but then later, later I bought it. And I was, I entertained over four and a half million people since I got what? there. What? It's yeah. amazing. And what a brilliant idea. And is it, it putting was, on shows all the time? Yeah, well, like I'm going to Branson October 9, well, it start October 11 and do like two months back to back, 58 shows. What? Yeah, 58 shows and they're already pre-sold and, and so I just walk out and it's like, it's my place, you know. And then Amazing. how, are, but I mean like when you're not there, the theater. I uh, There's like Acrobats of China was there. There was like uh, okay. uh, Illusion show. So it it's still working as a theater, but when I go back. But, but they still know Russians are bad and then here's, here's this guy. <laughs> Actually, they embrace me more for, um, I think, American success story more than. Yeah, that's a great, yeah, that's a great yeah, angle. Coming coming from and and saying do other what comics country. pass through there um jim stafford okay. uh, he was there before i was there and then several try to like uh, david brenner tried to get in there but it's a very specific market where, where is branson branson is in missouri <laughs> well yeah it's in the middle of the it's but like four hours uh, from st louis and from kansas city so okay. it's right in the center right in the middle yeah okay. the middle of the buckle belt you know of, wow yeah but it kind of makes sense i mean what kind of material are you doing in branson very similar to i i had to soften it a little bit to russian i mean similar to I mean, I imagine because the Midwest can be very conservative. Yes. So it kind of goes back to your initial training as a stand-up yes, in some way. Yes, you yeah. absolutely right. right. Like I you was can't ready. no sex, no religion, no politics. <laughs> Let's just tell these easy jokes. Not like, easy, but like, definitely not easy. Not but easy. I'm saying um, nobody's going to storm out offended because exactly. you're talking about the president 100%, or something. Yes, oh wow. Yeah, hundred percent. And oh, wow. I. But I was ready for that. I was trained yes. for it since Here's I was 15 years old. Here's a clip of you from your most recent show. Oh. I'm looking for girls for pussy. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That was the wrong. I'm sorry. Um, wow. Now, you've seen some, you've seen some wild Jeez. shit in your day. Yes, I have. Have you ever seen anything like this? Oh, come on. What is that? A is bull. Ukraine. They got upset. A bull went after the uh, the lady and who then, wore a red dress. Yeah, and then, but they look. They're like, "All right, knock it off, man. Get out of here." And Holy cow! What a country! <laughs> huh? What a country! <laughs> wow. Yeah, we just don't know exactly what country, but we're assuming yeah. it's um. It it, I don't it know. looked it looked um, eastern, right? It did. Eastern. It, yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah, the bulls don't. You think it's our tribe or is it Asian Eastern? You mean Mongolian? I, I, maybe I, I, I don't know. I I need to look at the bull one more time just to know which tribe. <laughs> Do you want to watch it more? No, time? No, okay, no, no, no. No, it's fine. <laughs> I don't think Yako shares your joy in this clip. <laughs> Okay. Different country. Yes, thank you for sharing that with me. I mean, <laughs> I was wondering how good my life was up till <laughs> now. I really am grateful. Yeah. Um, may I ask you a stupid question? Yeah. The la obviously the Smirnoff. This is a joke, right? Yes. It's not yes. your real Russian, God-given. Correct. Okay. Correct. Because you knew Americans knew Smirnoff I vodka. I worked in the bar. So, oh. That's oh. Right. Oh I knew, gosh. I knew, and I had the name tag Yakov, right? And they would say, where are you from? And I, you know, I tell them I'm from Ukraine. And, and they go, oh, so uh, what's your last name? And my last name is Pokies. And they go, hmm, okay. Uh, can I have some Smirnoff? You know, and I was right. like, little by little, it was like, Okay, I I think they're telling me something, you know. So. That's also very smart, very, it's very smart. clever. And and I tell a joke about coming out of the airport, uh, Kennedy Airport, and I see my name written big letters: <laughs> America loves Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> what a country! What right? a country! <laughs> <laughs> what a country! Um, here's another one for you. Oh boy! Oh shit! Oh. 
You remember this one? Oh, he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Wow. We checked. He had to be drunk out of his mind, right? Or I think stone? it's more just birth shit. <laughs> <laughs> just his, his brain chemistry. It's possible. <laughs> possible. But it's oh, interesting shit. that this, the building is like, yeah, it doesn't look American. Uh, what? what? <laughs> can you? He's not laughing. Neither can am you? I. That's cool. Well, we like we like geography. Do you <laughs> know what country this is? Uh, um. Oh man, I, 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 I it, Well, it had to be. Um, Asian, mm -hmm. uh, because the guy who's screaming look Asian, but it could have been, <laughs> but it could have been in East Los Angeles. That's you know, true. That's been. true. That's true. You know? It's uh, just, it's from, it's Taiwan. Uh -huh. Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. We respect the one China policy, but this is. Taiwan. Okay. May I ask him some <laughs> other relevant questions? <laughs> sure. Have you been back to Odessa since you left? I have. Yeah. I actually I married the uh, my second um, marriage. I married the girl from Ukraine and uh, ditch the Hungarian oh, wow. chick, huh? Oh, well, ditch those Americans. I think Hungarian. she was more ditching me than yeah. Oh. yeah. I think about my second wife all the time. What did you? Did you? I'm his first wife. <laughs> what do you think, twenty year old <laughs> yoga instructor? Yeah, what should I look for? Bimbo. On number two? I'm not getting into this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel <laughs> like <laughs> your deal. I feel like. And I feel like I'm that guy yeah. from Taiwan getting yeah. his, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, don't get me into this. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, he's dead. Oh. No, no, he's just kept me Okay, kidding, what, what? His, his legs weren't even shattered. Isn't that amazing? Okay. What was that? That? What, what happened? Oh, then? a car hit him. Smashed his You didn't legs. see that part? I did not. Let's oh. go back. Yeah, no, yeah, let's yeah, not. yeah. No, let's, let's not. not. Have you met Mikhail Broshnikov? <laughs> you friends with him? I did not. Meet Never? Him. Well, no, I, White I've been, Remember that I film? was sworn in. <laughs> yeah. I was sworn in the same day as he was sworn in oh, that's at, so cool. at the Statue of Liberty ceremonies. Yeah. But oh, I nice. didn't meet him. Yeah. He yeah. Was I feel like you guys could, could be buddies. Here, so look, I look, look. It's a car backing up into the garage. Yeah, yeah. Do you see that reaction? It's normal. Oh, sympathy. Oh, that's not. That's yeah, he thinks it's funny. He's oh, a sociopath. No, yeah. I'm not. So, so, serial killer, psycho. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know whatever. what I'm so struck by you is I had no idea how resilient you are. And I think that is the mark of the immigrant mentality. I love it. I mean, you were a cook. You started your own theater it? when Soviet Union collapsed. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's pretty there's, fucking amazing what you there's did. There's like a real entrepreneurial spirit the, to like the, what you did, especially that that figuring out like I got to go somewhere now and, I, and tar targeting Branson. I, I think you're right. And and then when Branson fell like about four and a half, five years ago, when I felt like, okay, I have learned a lot here I was able to develop a lot of material, mm -hmm. but my material shifted because after I went through a divorce, um, it was really difficult because I, I remember having, you know, my kids with me for a first time and I was reading my daughter a book, um, a, a fairy tale and it ended, you know, and she was going to, to bed and I'm reading her bedtime story. And it ended with, and they lived happily ever after. And, and she goes, Daddy, so why didn't you and Mommy live happily ever after? And I came up with a great answer. I said, go to sleep. <laughs> but I couldn't sleep, right? right? I, yeah. I literally took this on, as you noticed, about me surviving and going, okay, where can we go? Let's go to Branson. This time I went in inside and realizing me, I'm going, I, I can't blame her for everything. Obviously, I didn't know something as well. So I went, I went back to college. I went to University of Pennsylvania, got my master's degree in psychology.
Oh. Then became professor at Missouri State University, teaching a course on happiness and laughter. Because what? I really, yeah. I will, I, and then I last this May 18, I graduated with my doctorate degree from Pepperdine University. I love it. So what? So, I yeah, love yeah, this. yeah. This, this is legit. I, I brought. I told you. I brought you some. Some. So oh this is. Oh my gosh. This is my dissertation. Get the heck. 190 out. pages of, and it's all. It's a law of laughter. L O L. That was my. That was my. Why does laughter? Here's what sent me on this quest. Because in the beginning of the relationship, everybody's laughing. Mm -hmm. That's and I start asking people in my theater. I said would you go on a second date if you didn't have laughter on the first date? And nobody, I asked them to clap, nobody clapped. Four and a half million people, I'm going, there's something there about laughter that we uh, recognize that this might be the right person. It's not the only criteria, but it's yeah. a big one. It's so true. Yeah, and then, so what I start seeing, I'm going, so laughter is there in the beginning as a sign and then intimacy is next, and then you move in together, live, marry, whatever. And then when things don't go well, it's the reverse. It's like laughter goes first. Second thing mm. is intimacy. Third thing right. is your house. <laughs> right. So I right. needed to go to um, get master's degree and, and doctor degree to understand why does it happen to people and what attracts people and what repels people. Hmm. And so I developed a lot of things uh, during my studying. This is something I'll show you. I, I haven't shown it. Oh, I think Tom's uh, fond of this. Uh, What's that? Uh, is that a nut internet? tugger? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. Uh, do you have a way to show it here? But on this I think, I think uh, it, um, do it in your you'd hands. have to like, yeah, if you hold, hold it, if you hold it up to your face. Okay. Okay. Hold it up, yeah. okay, so it's not as good as, uh, okay. So you have two sides, two magnets, yep. equal, equal, you know, they're all the same. And so one says give and receive on one side, the other one says give and receive on the other side. So when they're opposite, when one person is giving, the other person is receiving, oh. they're solid. And then they reverse this uh, process. Right. But when the honeymoon stage, and this process happens during the honeymoon stage. Right. Uh, the, all the hormones that are given to us, dopamine and oxytocin and serotonin, all of those make us give the right thing to the right person, and then they receive it and they give back, and it's wonderful. And then it lasts about a year. That's what the science is now proven, the last year. So then they start giving, but they don't know what. And they and this is why I said Right, it's yeah. repelling. They start right. repelling. Oh. They start repelling. Mm -hmm. So then people block themselves, they create their own lives, and they create laughter with other people, and then they no longer repel. Oh. So if you understand this, and this is what helped me, and this is why I'm so happy in my marriage now, because, and she saw this and she fell in love with this concept, and it helped us to understand what to give, what to receive, Aww. and then, look at you. I like that. So That's what is lovely. your advice for people? Because I love relationship stuff too. Is it really to stay aware of the fact that you need to give and receive awareness is great so the formula that came out in this um dissertation was uh three elements that will ensure laughter continues right yeah number one you have to be complementary opposite mm. which this society is doing everything to make us the same yeah right. well there's no gender everything. we know that yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 my wife what's your I, identity I, my wife this is uh, she went she goes to santa monica college to learn english and so she wanted to take another course and they asked her to fill out this application. And, and normally I'm there to help her, but I wasn't. And she calls me and she goes, the, it says gender, but it has six different <laughs> things. Which one am I? Oh. And, and yeah. to her, it was like, I was looking for something that says normal, yeah. <laughs> but there is no such thing. Right. So. So the complementary is opposite, number one. Number two, understanding the needs of the person. Now, in the beginning, we're giving this free introductory offer 
during the honeymoon stage. Right. And then we got to pay full price. So conscious understanding of what is it that she is expecting? Mm -hmm. What is it that you're expecting? And it's totally different for her than for you. And I was researching all of this and it was like, wow, once people know it, they have a shot. They have a shot, and there are books on this, and so this dissertation. Was, uh, once you understand those, you can go by the numbers. You go, okay, she needs a t affection, conversation, open and honesty. There, she's nodding. You know, so much affection. Uh, <laughs> I'm very affectionate. But he needs the yeah. sandwiches, blowjobs, <laughs> check, check, pets, scratches. Not in that order, Not right? Not in that. <laughs> so, uh, and then the third element. And the third element is shared sense of humor. 100%. But that happens pretty much. Immediately. Too, immediately. Yeah. And you just need to sustain it, but it happens immediately. So those two first ones, complementary opposites, and understanding the needs of the other person would solve 90% of the problems. Wow. I mm -hmm. feel like if I show that to my potential second wife, it's, like a, it's a great, you know Tom. what I mean? It's a great fit, like it's I a mean. great teaching tool. And I could be like, see how this works? You know? I can see why your show is so popular. Yes. <laughs> you know, I will say, the first I knew Tom was the one for me when we watched this documentary about Timothy Treadwell, the guy who likes to camp with b grizzly bears. It was yes. called Grizzly Man. Yes. And it was a sad scene, I think, where he's getting mauled by a bear. <laughs> And you see that? Laugh. And both Tom and I are the only two assholes laughing. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly And I was like, was. this is the guy funny. for me. This, yeah, this was the funny. scene. Yeah, was like, this was yeah. the scene. It's a documentary Werner Herzog did about the guy who lived with, he lived with bears and he was eventually killed by a bear. <laughs> by a bear. And there was one scene where there was a pilot who said that, you know, he goes, normally uh, up in Alaska, you know, I take people here and there. This guy <laughs> hired me to drop him off in bear country during the most active bear hunting season. Like when bears are foraging for food, he goes, I thought the guy was, you know, a little funny in the head. And everybody <laughs> in the theater was like, oh. And we were like, ah, <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and uh, yeah. a couple of people like turned, you know, <laughs> looked and looked. Yeah. yeah, but that's when I knew we had something special. Yes, today. and that's yeah. why I know why you have those clips. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the more pain, the better. The he better. That. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that bear guy, I mean. You fucking retard. He, was, <laughs> he wasn't smart. So the, but the second wife, you guys have a shared sense of humor. Yes. Yeah. Very you feel much like so. This oh, was a and home she run. makes me laugh as well as I'm Good. making her laugh. Good. And, yeah, big time. And you're aware of her needs. Very much so. Yeah, that's huge. Very and, much and I so. think wanting to Very keep so. up with somebody else's needs. Yes, it's the want to choosing please. to become. Yes. yes, that person. That took me twenty years, literally, from when I got divorced to the, when I met her. Twenty years. I was dating different people. I was going there. They we're not complementary opposites. I mean, I knew all of this already. But I couldn't find complimentary opposites. Explain that again. What is complimentary? It's opposite? it's like the when you give, she receives. Oh, I got you. And when oh, okay. she, you, uh, she gives, you receive. That's complimentary yeah, opposite. That's complimentary opposite. Okay. And what you give is what she needs or what you need. Right. That's that's the and that's it. It's that simple. I like but it. But the commitment to that is not simple. To say right. I'm taking full responsibility of doing this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. this is what i'm going to provide for us and that's really the essence of a good relationship is personal responsibility yes. instead of blaming your spouse for right. your unhappiness right. i see because i do my parents i think did that like they were so angry inside themselves and they would lash out at the other person yeah. like this motherfucker he's doing everything wrong it's like yeah but that's <laughs> not <laughs> it. it's not him you bitch like, what, what are you doing you know make yourself get your shit right and then you can take care of other people but yeah, yeah. it's not easy no For people they see it a lot easier somewhere to else. pick on and yeah. to pick on yes and then they have affairs and they think well the, ne the next one's going to be easier it's like it's the same you're just picking the same people yes. usually yes and now, tell your partner what you need fuck me in my ass, man. <laughs> you know <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> what do you need tom what are your needs you know what my needs are <laughs> do. yeah she just lists them yeah, yeah. sandwiches <laughs> bj <laughs>
<laughs> Not Tugger. <laughs> admiration. And then admiration. yours. Yeah. Big Admir- one. I Huge. Think, and I like that word. Yeah. Admiration. admiration. It's more than, or I actually like adoration. I adore Tom Segura. Adore and But admire. I think adore uh, is I different agree. than admire. Yeah. You think so? Oh, yes. Big time. For a man. Oh, that's interesting. Men, oh, men, leave, men. men need admiration, admiration more than women need Way admiration. bigger. Yeah. Way bigger. It's true. Yeah. 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 Way bigger. And what does that mean exactly? So explain to the women listening. To recognize that, you know, you need to find something that you admire, whether he's a great dad, whether he's a uh, great provider, whether he's funny, whatever whatever those things are. And it, sometimes it's kind of slim pickings because, you know, you're mad at each Guy's other. Guy's a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to yeah. admire that. But, yeah. but it, uh, having an exercise of saying, I really appreciate you and admire you for. Why this. do you think though? Because mm-hmm. I've I've always thought that before you even articulate it, that men have the need for admiration more than women have that. You know, not that it's not existing the other way, but why do you feel like I, men? I need think it? it was building into our DNA in terms of, um, like we were stronger species who was able to go and risk their lives to get a kill a bear or be yeah. eaten by a bear or whatever and the admiration of a woman saying you kept us alive uh-huh oh it's like you fuel. Yeah. yeah and that made him go back to, to the same thing That's right. yeah and wars oh, was right. the right. same thing it's you appreciation know? for Appreciate, the sacrifice. and those parades and all of those things that were uh, medals all of those things were designed to feed that ego, yes. But if you see it as healthy and saying this man is a good man, and he wants to give me and the family something great, I'm gonna find some wonderful words and actions. And so my son was uh, visiting yesterday, um, and he's 26, and and my wife was so adorable. She I gave her a, a nice birthday card, uh, you know, uh, that I designed and a poem and stuff like that. And, and she was showing it off in, to him, saying, look what your dad did. And it was just like, oh, this was you like, feel it. oh, yeah. totally, yeah. Well, it's, it's like mommy's, I mean, I hate to be too Freudian, but it is, it's mommy's initial approval, right? It's the, Probably the gaze for, of the, the approving woman, you know? I don't know. I, I tie it back They're to like, probably, I love my sons and I, I hope that one day my sons will marry a woman who admires them the way, yes. you know what I mean? Like they yes. looks at them lovingly the way I do, yeah. not with disdain or you want some, a woman who will be like, this guy's the best. Absolutely. This guy's I, the I best. And I would hold out yeah. for it. I held out for 20 years. Yeah. I was, you know, basically said, no, no, until I felt that this woman and she fell in love when she saw this and she just went, there is brilliance in here, and yeah. that immediately gave me that sense of being admired, and I was be able to share something that she found valuable. Yeah, and it's like yeah. wow. That's and what's awesome. interesting too is women. Uh, somebody listened to this, Michael. Oh, that's so old school. That's so 1950s. Yeah, but you have to understand too that uh, the woman holds a lot of power. There's a lot of power huge, in that. Huge. Um, and if y- y- women is uh, look, I know this is old school as fuck, but we're the center of the home. The, the woman, the mother. No doubt. And if mommy's not happy, nobody else is happy. Correct. And if mom isn't doing this stuff, it's like the whole fucking world falls apart. The whole ecosystem apart falls apart. Yeah. yeah. It's but, a big responsibility. But this society also devalued that. Yes. Oh, it's well, well, we're all the time. same now, right? It made, women it, women yeah, it made, so what do you do for a living? It used right. to be, you know, what, what's your family like? You know, and now right. it's like, no, what do you do? What do you do? And, and men are lost at this uh, society. They don't know what to do. That's mm-hmm. why the suicide rate is so huge and all of those uh, opioids and all of those things happening because men have not been given attention for the last 50 years, really. Women have been, and they succeeded tremendously, but men kind of was left in the dust and they don't know what to we do. Don't, we don't know what how to adjust yet. We don't know what what the roles and, are and, just yet. Maybe. And so it's hard yeah. for a man to be that, to be admired for something when he is a child, overgrown child. Right. And so the, the wife feels like she is a mother. To yes, him. yes. And yes, that yes, yes. totally destroys that, and that's not a good self-esteem, everything. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bad one too. You don't want to no be a good. mother to your husband. I never would have expected that 
such great insight into relationships and human behavior would come from Yakov Smirnov. Right? <laughs> I know. I'm serious, man. It's I like, know. it's fascinating. It's really Thank interesting. You. You know? We have so, to come back and talk about but, this again next but time. But you know what? It came from laughter. It's what yeah. we do, right? Yeah. But and when we're on stage, we're listening very, very carefully for that laughter. Mm. If it doesn't happen, we get off stage and we're thinking, you know what? I could have said this or I could yeah. have said that. That laughter in a relationship is your gauge. Yeah. A hundred percent. And if you keep laughing, everything's great. That's true. But the, the laughter goes away. It's oh, a first yeah. signal. It's like, you know, having um mammogram or something you check yeah. laughter and see yes. am i needing some attention to this and if i do go back to the those three things sense of humor we have so now what do i need to do i need to become complementary opposite and i need to know what her or his needs are it's love fascinating it. stuff um your whole story is amazing i would love for you to come back and talk all about relationships I'd be happy to um, so anybody, anything that you want to tell people where they can see you or anything coming they up? Can, they can see me. I don't know. Where do you air this? Is it airs right away? Or no, it'll no? be. A, okay. Yeah. It's, okay. So probably Branson uh, at my Amazing. theater, Yakov Smirnov Theater. Uh, and I'll be there uh, from October, October 11 to December 7. And uh, uh, Yakov.com, Y-A-K-O-V.com. And then on social media, you know, it's Yaakov underscore Smirnov. And I, I feel silly promoting that because, you know, I'm going to be followed. And in the Soviet Union, that's the last thing I wanted. <laughs> I wanted. So, awesome. so find me on social media and there you go. follow me. Uh, Yaakov, thanks so much Thank for coming. Thank you so pleasure. much. Thank you guys for Thank listening, you. for watching. We'll see you in another week. Ta-ta there, return. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Lucifer's Lair. Oh, guess him. You all know my jitters by now. Oh, guess him. I come over and fuck the shit at me. Oh, guess him. Put clamps on the nipples, man. Let's get down with breast tacks. Oh, 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 Rock. oh, 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 oh. Let's get down with bread tax.
Hi, thank you for watching that episode of Your Mom's House. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more, you can click on any of these videos in this general area. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps feed our cats. Don't have any cats. <laughs>